Man, y'all already see what it is, man. If y'all want to just fast forward to the actual video portion where you're going to have the attorney of New York or the district attorney of New York um, is going to explain um, all of the charges of Sean Combs or they known as Diddy. Let me just say this before I get into it. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, especially as a black man, when you see so another black man that is getting indicted, um, it's nothing funny about the situation. These are serious charges. Um, I know I've seen on social media, people making fun of them and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what's true. I don't know what's not true, but I do know that there are a lot of things that Cassie put out there. I do know. What's true is what we saw in the video on what Diddy had did to Cassie, which was uncalled for. We saw that. That's true. Uh, but there's some more serious allegations that's involved here. And uh, there are a lot of content creators who have put out documents um, of the court documents of the indictments that's against Diddy. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, man. Um, this is a story, and as a content creator, I think it's very important for me to share this on my platform um, because this this is going to be a big hit, a big blow uh, to black culture. Um, another um, person who's been very successful in the music industry and in the entertainment industry, Bad Boys, and another one like r kelly like what happened to r kelly this is another situation serious situation that sean combs is up against um, but let's get into it so we can see what the prosecutor um explains the charges against sean combs Let's go ahead and listen to the U.S. Morning, attorney everyone. for New York. My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the U.S. attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Today, I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak offs and he often electronically recorded them. The freak off sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak offs and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at and dragged victims at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked, dragged and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles hotel when the victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate 
in the freak offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak-offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak offs, and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. And as alleged, Combs used others to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and contacting a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. Here are some of the items that we recovered during the searches. As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well, we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here, the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Now, I want to be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. 
anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I wanna express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I also wanna thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be invaluable partners to us. I also wanna thank the incredible agents and analysts from SDNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. And finally, I wanna thank the outstanding career prosecutors from SDNY who are handling this case. Meredith Foster, Emily Johnson, Chrissy Slavic, Madison Smizer, and Mitzi Steiner, and their supervisors, Jamie Backleapter and Jacqueline Kelly. They are members of the Civil Rights Unit in our criminal division. We created the Civil Rights Unit when I became U.S. Attorney. I am deeply proud of their work on this and so many other cases. I'll now take some questions. Aaron Katursky, ABC. Thanks, Jim. Damien, thanks. The indictment describes aggressive, open, violent, hedonistic abuse that you say was recurrent and widely known. Why did it take law enforcement so long to intervene? How many women were victimized by Sean Combs and how many others were involved? Look, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Um, I can't tell you why it took so long. I think the, the, the better focus is on the fact that we are here today um, and we are committed to making sure that justice is done. Next question. Thank you. Julia Ainsley, NBC. Thank you for doing this. You said we are not done and that Combs did not do this alone. Do you foresee that there could be other charges related to this case? I'm not taking anything off the table. Janet Fisher, Newsday. Yeah. What's the difference between the uh, sex trafficking and uh, promoting travel for the uh, purpose of prostitution? Well, there are different crimes with different elements. I don't um, think we should get into the, the nitty gritty of the legal discussion right now, but um, the, the, the sex trafficking, we believe, they're all serious offenses, but the sex trafficking um, uh, conduct um, carries some significant penalties, and, uh, and, and we are gratified that we were able to bring that charge. Is one more coercive than the other? I'm not gonna be able to get into that, but, but you can look it up, and, and, and yes, sex trafficking, especially when it involves coercion or force, um, is, is a very serious crime, and it carries significant penalties. Good afternoon, Darla Miles, ABC7 New York. Thank you for this press conference and for the details. Two questions. Um, in context of this indictment and the information that was presented to the grand jury, are you able to clarify the number of victims? It's mentioned plural in the indictment, but can you specify the number of victims just for this particular indictment? And secondly, can you provide details about the alleged arson? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide either. Um, the number of victims, um, you are correct. They, we are intentional in saying multiple. Um, uh, the details of the arson incident um, are limited to what we have in the indictment and also the detention letter that we filed, uh, um, which contains more details than the indictment does at various points, um, but we don't have anything more beyond that. Next question. Lynn Tran, CNN. Um, are any of his accomplices or uh, associates under investigation? And additionally, could he face any more charges? So the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe uh, committed the crime uh, with him. Next question. Julia Papa. Hi, good morning from 1010 Winds. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences and did he have locations where he kept them and did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in LA, Miami. Why in New York? Well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the US attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it, um, the Southern District of New York can do it. And so we're very proud of that. 
And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from, it's something that we embrace and we will continue to do that. Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone, um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Um, that was at a hotel. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand? Or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you? how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms of the elements? Thanks. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. John Anise, New York Daily News. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the the uh, guns, the the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Where were they found amongst his residence? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place? I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So for instance, um, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three defaced AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, broken down into parts along with magazines um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So um, some, of the, some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not gonna be able to get into uh, where other items were, were stored. Ben Kochman, Post. Hey, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. Um, I, I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does, it, does, the, does the memo address or is your office concerned with uh, with Combs's safety in custody, given um, given what happened with Ep Epstein, so we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, but I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and. Um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Are, are some of the prosecutors on this case uh, some of the same prosecutors that have been uh, handling that or, or that worked on the Maxwell case? So. Um, I'm not gonna get into the, 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 the staffing. I will say that this team, this group of, 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 of AUSAs, this incredible um, group has been working on this case around the clock um, and they've had their hands full. Next question. Gus Rosendale, uh, NBC News. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Combs' attorney said uh, that his client has been cooperative with investigators. He said that this morning. I was wondering if you would have a reaction to that. Um, let me just say this. I think that um, generally uh, and in, with increasing frequency, the, the word cooperative or cooperating has taken on tremendous elasticity and it no longer really bears any relation to what um, uh, the word means when we use it um, in a very specific context. So um, uh, responding to lawful process um, and the like um, does not qualify as cooperation when we use that term here. Mike Sizak, AP. Thanks. To that end, uh, was there any discussion of Mr. Combs surrendering? I understand he was taken into custody at a hotel in Manhattan last night, and maybe that wasn't the plan. Can you elaborate on, on how that came about and why that was? I'm not gonna be able to get into any sort of operational um, details as to how he was taken into custody and when. Um, he is in custody right now. He will be appearing in court later today. Was there any discussion of him surrendering, given you know they claim he's cooperating? I'm not going to be able to get into law enforcement tactics um, or operations. Well, um, I can't get into the charging decision. It, it is very meaningful to us that weapons uh, were possessed. 
um, as we allege in the indictment. Um, uh, you know, part of the reason why this conduct was so um, uh, pervasive and, um, and harmful was because victims and others didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, denying him his wishes, as we allege, um, because of the presence of, of, of firearms. Um, I'll, I should leave it there. Thanks. Last question, Jacob Shamison. Jacob Shamsi and Business Insider. Thank you. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, that uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is very active and ongoing. And I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly foreseeable, um, but I cannot predict them sitting here today. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We have been listening to the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York uh, detail some very disturbing and graphic allegations in a newly unsealed uh, indictment, a federal indictment against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. That was Damien Williams. Um, and I want to go ahead and bring in CBS News correspondent Jerika Duncan, who is outside the courthouse. Jerika, what are we learning from this indictment that we didn't already know from many of the civil cases that have been brought against Combs? I understand the difference between civil and criminal. This is this being criminal. But what revelations uh, have there been in this indictment? Well, there's so much to discuss, you know, for the U.S. Attorney of the Southern District, Damian Williams, to take as many questions as he did and really lay out what he could with this case gives us a better picture into what evidence they also say they have to make these charges. Again, if you're just tuning in, those charges, racketeering, sex trafficking, and transportation to engage in prostitution. He called what Sean Diddy Combs uh, organized a business empire that he said he controlled using kidnapping, bribery, saying that he exploited people, used force, threats. Um, and when you really understand where all of this comes from, you have to go back to the lawsuit, that civil lawsuit that was fired by Combs's longtime ex-girlfriend. Uh, Mr. Williams mentioned that video that would later show up after he settled with her in that civil case when she was claiming that he sexually assaulted her um, and beat her. And then we saw evidence of that uh, months later in a 2016 video in a hotel where she is hit, kicked, and dragged. Those were the exact words that he used in this criminal case. Uh, something else worth noting, Lindsay, is what he talked about when referencing what they were able to find when searching the home. He said that they searched and seized evidence, three defaced AR-15s, evidence of freak offs. Again, this was a term used in the civil suit, but now talking about it in the criminal form. Um, he said also that this is not done, that there could be more people that are prosecuted as a result of this. But today, of course, the focus being on Sean Diddy Combs. And Jerika, many reporters were quick to ask whether any more charges could be coming because this indictment says that he did not do this alone. He was essentially enabled by the people around him, the apparatus that he built, according to prosecutors, as part of this uh, criminal enterprise, again, according to the indictment, that essentially enabled this behavior and led to a pattern of coercion and intimidation. Yeah, I mean, he said it again by saying we are not done. He even gave a phone number for people to call if they have any tips, uh, because this is an ongoing investigation, as he said a couple of times. He also talked about other charges not being off the table. One of the first questions, though, I think that many people have had, this is someone who's been so well known, a business entrepreneur, a mogul, uh, for 30 years. And the question was, why did this take so long? And are there any other victims? He would not specify about how many victims there are allegedly, only to say that there's multiple based on that indictment. When it comes to why it took so long, he said the better focus should be that we are here today. I mean, that is the question. He just got the key to New York City uh, in 2023. He was asked to give it back. He did give it back. And yet here we are. Prosecutors saying that this behavior went on for decades. Jerika, we are expecting to learn more from this detention document um, that uh, Williams kept mentioning, um, that they will be trying to seek pre-trial detention. What do we know about 
what that document will contain and when we might get it. So we're working on getting that document right now. What I can tell you is that we're hearing that Combs is expected to appear in court now just after 2.30 this afternoon. So we're, of course, going to keep a close eye on that. As for the pretrial detention, essentially, Williams is saying we want him to remain behind bars. We'll look at that document and get back to you in terms of the reasons. But they obviously feel that he's a threat uh, to the public. Um, when asked about his cooperation, he also mentioned that he said the word cooperating has taken on tremendous elasticity and that responding to the law in their eyes is not necessarily cooperating with authorities. Um, so we know that he's going to be in custody, but we do know that they're not going to get into, at least uh, Damien Williams saying, they're not going to get into the why and when they took him into custody the way that they did uh, as far as that investigation is concerned. But a lot uh, came out of this. Also, I thought worth mentioning, having covered R. Kelly uh, several times in both trials, he said that he was not going to compare or sort of contrast the two. But we do know that uh, Homeland Security Investigations is the same group that really took on a bulk of the responsibility when it came to R. Kelly. Same group, again, looking at these charges that are also similar in nature when you think about sexual assault and sex trafficking. Jerika Duncan, thank you so much. We'll see you at the top of the hour. And joining me right now is celebrity attorney Chris Melcher. Um, Chris, obviously, we just heard that press conference. We were talking to you on the front end. Um, did not think that the, the U.S. attorney was going to get as graphic as he did because this is so disturbing. But but he did. The, the nature of the allegations are disturbing. Your thoughts after that press conference? Well, they certainly took their time, and that was a very well-crafted press conference where they were laying out a little bit more detail than we saw in the charging document. Um, and, and I do have that detention letter, so that's a letter to the judge saying that uh, Diddy should, or Mr. Combs, should remain in custody pending trial. So that's pretty unusual. Many times somebody's going to be released on a bond, his attorney, according to that detention letter, had offered a $50 million bond to secure uh, Mr. Combs' attendance at trial and also electronic monitoring. The, the government's saying that's not sufficient, that's not enough money to really um, dissuade Diddy from fleeing. And more importantly, it's alleged that he is a danger to the community, that he could dissuade witnesses um, from testifying. So what they're asking is, is that he be held in custody. He's in custody right now, and they don't want him released. The judge will have to decide that, or magistrate, I should say, will decide that later today. But these are, are I mean, the conduct is depraved, multiple victims. And what is most significant to me is, is that these um, events were allegedly recorded, and the government has those recordings. That's going to make it extremely difficult if um, for Diddy to defend himself, hmm. if those recordings show coercion or violence. Important point there. Uh, Chris, according to the indictment, um, law enforcement sees firearms and ammunition, including three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers and a drum magazine. How will that play in? We know as part of the allegations, they say that Combs regularly carried and even brandished weapons to create an atmosphere of intimidation. Well, that, that is part of this allegation that these women, unfortunately, became part of his orbit um, because he's famous and that that was his way of, of kind of preying on these folks. And But then when they realized what was going on and wanted to escape, that he used threats and intimidation. And uh, the allegation is weapons were displayed. And so we did see some weapons. Of course, it, it can be legal to, to own weapons. Um, in the U.S., but uh, these were high-capacity magazines or defaced serial numbers. So depending on where uh, those weapons were possessed, that could make it illegal and, and kind of demonstrate the intimidation or fear uh, that allegedly was, was used against these women. We definitely saw that in the Ca uh, Cassie video, the 2016 hotel surveillance video. And I would note that, that Diddy initially denied that. He said she was looking for a payday. And that. Um, and then when we saw that video, we know that that was untrue. There we have it, man. Uh, I think at the end of the day, y'all, uh, what we have here um, is a situation where um, they came out the ditty, point blank period. They came out the ditty. I believe they built their case up to a certain point 
where they feel that they can actually indict him and charge him. Um, this is a very, these are some very serious, serious um, allegations. And if found guilty, um, he's probably going to be in there for props, possibly for the rest of his life. Um, you have to wonder um, what's going on in his head, what's going on in his kids' heads, what's going on in his family and friends head and at the end of the day some people are going to say this is what he deserved um, you have to pay the piper now you've been roaming around allegedly saying these things are not true and doing things behind behind people's back and living another life um, you have some people are going to be sad so it's going to be interesting to, to see on social media um, everybody's opinions towards the situation. But what I do know is that this is no joke. And these are very serious, serious crimes that they are charging Diddy. Y'all stay tuned to the next video.